Hello, and welcome to this video where we'll be taking a look at soil transmitted helminths. Like the name suggests, soil transmitted helminths are a group of parasitic worms, or helminths, that are transmitted through soil that's been contaminated with their eggs. These infections are very common. It mainly affects poor and disadvantaged communities around the world. It's estimated that over 1.5 billion people in the world are infected with these worms. That's almost a quarter of the world's population. Most of these infections occur in tropical and subtropical countries. They're commonly seen in areas where there's warm and moist climate, and there's poor sanitation and hygiene. Although there are many different species of helminths, we'll focus on the three main types that cause infections in humans. These are roundworms, Ascaris lumbricoides, whipworms, Trichurius trichuria, and hookworms, Nicator americanus and Ancelostoma duodenale. They vary in the type of illness they cause and their life cycle. Soil transmitted helminths are transmitted by eggs that are passed in the feces of people who are infected. The soil can be contaminated by feces in areas where there's poor sanitation and people defecate outside or when human feces is used as fertilizer. Once they're in the soil, roundworm and whipworm eggs mature into an infective form. This can take a few weeks. Hookworm eggs, on the other hand, mature and hatch into larvae that have the ability to penetrate skin. A person can be infected in several different ways. It can enter through the mouth. This can happen when food such as vegetables are contaminated with eggs and are not cooked or washed before eating. When water is contaminated. When people's hands are contaminated by the soil and not washed before eating. Hookworm larvae have the ability to penetrate the skin of people. People usually get infected when they're walking barefoot. Very rarely some types of hookworm larvae can get into the body when they're consumed. Now, once they enter the body, they eventually make their way to the small or large intestine where they live and grow. But they have slightly different ways of getting there. Hookworm larvae that penetrate the skin are carried through the blood into the heart and lungs and eventually make their way to the small intestine. Roundworm eggs that are swallowed hatch into larvae, enter the blood, make a trip via the heart and lungs, and eventually make their way to the small intestine. Whipworm eggs, on the other hand, hatch into larvae and make their way directly to the large intestine. Once in their final destinations, they attach to the wall of the intestine, grow, mature, and can live there for many years. They also produce thousands of eggs per day, which are then passed out in the feces to start the cycle of infection again. People can be infected with more than one type of worm at the same time. So. How does this disease present? Well, the symptoms will depend on the type of worm and the number of worms that are living in the intestine. People with very few worms may have no symptoms at all. On the other hand, people with a lot of worms can have a range of symptoms. What happens in the intestine is that these worms can feed on tissues, blood, or nutrients. There can also be blood loss and inflammation at the sites where the worms attach. The chronic blood loss leads to anemia. The loss of protein and reduced absorption of nutrients can lead to nutritional impairment and malnutrition. When these happen over a long period of time, it can lead to impaired physical and mental development, especially in children. This can in turn lead to poor school performance and reduce future economic productivity. Other symptoms include diarrhea and abdominal pain, malaise, weakness, and loss of appetite. With hookworm infections, there could be skin irritation where the hookworm larvae enter the body. And sometimes, people present with respiratory symptoms when the worms travel through the lungs. Heavy infections can lead to bowel obstruction, which can be life-threatening. Whipworm infections can lead to rectal prolapse. Sometimes the worms can migrate and cause disease in other parts of the body, like the bile ducts and nasal sinuses. Infections are usually diagnosed by looking at stool samples under the microscope and identifying eggs. Sometimes, worms can be passed in feces and are large enough to be seen. Worms such as Ascaris can grow up to 35 centimeters long. So, how do we treat these infections? There is very effective anti-helminthic medication to treat infections. When there's bowel obstruction or prolapse, surgery is sometimes needed. Let's talk about prevention. 
Over the years, there have been sustained control programs that have been led by the World Health Organization, national governments, and with the help of others such as non-governmental organizations and pharmaceutical companies. The best long-term strategies to prevent soil-transmitted helminth infections are having clean and uncontaminated water supplies and improving sanitation, such as providing appropriate toilets and effective sewage disposal systems. Hygiene practices such as hand washing, washing food, and not walking barefoot will also prevent people from being infected. In parts of the world where there are difficulties in implementing effective and large-scale improvements in water and sanitation, periodic mass drug administration, also called deworming, for at-risk people has been very effective. This can reduce the burden of disease and subsequently the consequence of infections. At-risk people include preschool and school-aged children and women of childbearing age. People in certain jobs such as tea pickers or miners are also at high risk of infection. Deworming is usually done once or twice a year depending on how common the disease is in those communities. Although there's research into developing a human vaccine, there is no effective vaccine on the market yet. And that's a quick look at soil-transmitted helminths. For more information, have a look at the websites below.